If the West had given the go-ahead to Ukraine to strike deep into Russia, the enemy's logistics would have suffered greatly. This conclusion was made by analysts from the Institute for the Study of War who studied in detail satellite images of Ukrainian armed forces strikes on military warehouses in the Tovo region and Krasnodar Krai. Recent satellite images from Maksar have shown dramatic damage to three major military depots in Russia. ISW analysts have analyzed the images and the aftermath of the strikes in detail. Satellite images of warehouses in Toropets and Oktyabrsky in the Tver region as well as in Tikoretsk in the Krasnodar region showed the destruction of more than 10 buildings where ammunition and railway cars were stored which the occupiers used to transport the shells. Experts claim that the Russian Federation was allegedly confident that the Ukrainian armed forces would not be able to strike or cause serious damage so deep in the rear. If the West had given the go-ahead for long-range strikes, the Russian Defense Ministry would have been powerless against such an attack. However, for now, Ukraine has to attack with its own weapons. Many Russian war correspondents after the attack on military warehouses acknowledged the complete lack of protection at warehouses and air bases. Some Z bloggers complained not only about Google Maps, which regularly updates photos, but also about the Russian resource Yandex, which posts updated photos of the area on the internet. Bloggers also complained that the Kremlin has not yet created a system for separating its ammunition supplies to ensure that when Ukrainian forces intercept Russian ammunition shipments, they destroy only small caches of ammunition rather than launching strikes that would cause catastrophic and widespread damage. ISW continues to assess that the West can weaken Russia's ability to use mass material on a large scale by removing restrictions on Ukraine's use of precision weapons, forcing Russian commanders to break up ammunition depots into smaller, less effective facilities, some of which would be located further from Ukraine. The Ukrainian air defense's daring tactics, honed over two years of planning, have dealt a significant blow to Russia's once dominant air force. According to the article in The Times, Soviet-era missiles were used during the ambushes. A senior Ukrainian military intelligence officer revealed details of the joint operation with the air force to journalists. Thus, in May 2022, Ukraine decided to restore the S-200 system and use it at the front. First, they found officers who had previously operated these anti-aircraft missile systems, and then engineers who could restore them. The first launch took place in the fall of 2023, but the missiles missed their target due to a change in the A-50's flight path. However, the military man says that the operation still had a positive effect. We set an example for the Air Force so that they would not be afraid of being fired upon. On the first try, when we launched, two missiles, they saw how quickly we hid the launchers and evacuated. No one even noticed where we were. The Ukrainian officer said, Already this year, the Ukrainian Air Force took up the challenge using German Patriot batteries mounted on trucks. It was very risky because we had to drive the Patriot very close to the front. It's a radar, a launcher, a power source, a security vehicle. It's five or six big vehicles, said a lieutenant colonel of the Ukrainian Air Force. On January the 14th, a SAM battery was waiting for an A-50 crossing the Sea of Azov with the IL-22 Command Center aircraft. The Russian crews believed they were well beyond the reach of any land-based threat. They had less than two minutes before the missiles hit. The A-50 crashed into the sea and the IL-22 was damaged. After that, the Russian command moved the A-50s out of range of the Patriots, but they were still within range of the S-200s. On February the 23rd, a Ukrainian S-200 battery under the command of the GUR struck a second aircraft, which was about 170 kilometers from the front line. During another operation, Ukrainian forces managed to inflict further losses on the occupiers. The military used the S-300 system with the radar turned on as bait and lured the aircraft into the Patriots' zone of action. They happily flew out to destroy the S-300 and then the Patriot appeared. Of the six aircraft, two were shot down by the S-300 and four by the Patriot, said an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. On April the 19th, 
The GUR used the S-200 to destroy a Russian Tu-22M3 strategic bomber that crashed over Stavropol Krai while on a mission to launch cruise missiles at Ukraine. Since then, they have changed the missile launch distance. We have pushed them away from some of the targets they could have attacked. The officer added, According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, since the beginning of the full-scale war, the Russian army has lost 369 aircraft and 328 helicopters of various types. On January the 14th, Ukrainian defenders managed to shoot down an A-50 airborne, early warning and control aircraft, and on February the 23rd, a second A-50 airborne early warning and control system was destroyed.